So I want to welcome you to Indie Creators in the Joy Zone. This is Suzanne Toro, and we'll soon have Thomas Ardovani here with us. And today we have special guest, Jameson Burt. He's an amazing musician from Southern California and a fellow, uh, I'm calling us hopeless romantics. Uh, but I'm super excited to have you here, Jameson, to uh, share your wisdom, your music, and uh, your vibe. <laughs> so um, my first question for you is that you seem like so iconic as far as a musician. You have a nostalgia to you. Uh, when did you the music grab you? Was it all your life that you've been this way? Uh, music grabbed me, I mean, yeah, from as long as I can remember. Mm. You know, a lot of my earliest memories are tied to music. Um, being in the car with my dad listening to the Beach Boys or Joni Mitchell or um, all kinds of things. And then, you know, my dad used to sing me to sleep. My dad's not a, a professional musician, but he's a, he plays the guitar and sings. Like, it's always been a, a hobby and something he loves, you know. Right. Um, so, um, yeah, I, uh, you know, he used to play songs for me while I was falling asleep as a little kid. So music has always, um, has always been in my life in the, in, in that way. And then I really got into doing it myself. I mean, my dad offered to teach me guitar, like, um, really early on, you know, maybe I was like eight, nine years old and I just wasn't into it. And at 11, I wasn't into it, you know, skateboarding and you know, body mm. surfing, doing all these things. And, Finally, when I was 12, like some kids, um, some new neighbors came to the block. These two brothers that one had a drum set and one had an electric guitar. And I would go hang out at their house and watch them. And they were so loud <laughs> that it blew my mind. And I was like, okay, now, now that's interesting. And so I, I went home and asked my dad to start teaching me to play guitar. So beautiful. That's, oh. how, it, that's how it started for me. Yeah, a soft nudge. Luckily, luckiest kid ever to go to get sleep with guitar and a song. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. pretty special. He's good. He's a good dad. Yeah, absolutely. And so from there, uh, as far as diving in, uh, you're a songwriter and musician, composer. Uh, where did that journey lead you, as far as? Um, you know, taking time to find your, your style, or was it there immediately? I still don't feel like I've found my style. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm still searching. Yeah. But, um, I mean, my teenage years was, was all about guitar, you know. I was yeah. just a guitar player, and I was, like, obsessed. Yeah. Um, all through high school, junior high and high school. Yeah, but, well, I think that's pretty typical right and then then when the, did the writing and the romantic kick in so uh Susanna I, I lost you for a minute uh, I don't know if we froze up I missed yeah, your just last please, question which is unusual. that's okay um so go back you were really uh all guitar as a teen and then then what happened I think I interrupted you and you froze <laughs> That's okay. Um, yeah, all about guitar and started playing bars, like playing guitar music and, and doing covers and stuff. But like I wasn't singing, I was just playing the melodies on the guitar. <laughs> um, and a teacher that I had said, look, if you want to play out for people, you got someone in the band's got to sing. So I mm. started kind of reluctantly learning to uh, exploring my voice and, um, and that took years, you know, honestly, like a few years of like getting comfortable with that before I started writing my own lyrics, writing my music when I was about 20 years old, you know. But then once I started writing songs and I could sing them, it was like a drug, you know, <laughs> and never, never looked back after that. Yeah, beautiful. And we were yeah. talking a little bit before we got on air that um, you, have you spent most of your time touring in Europe or where where's been your place that's even I've, received mostly 
I've toured more in Europe than the States, um, you know, for a few reasons. One, I, you know, it, like we were talking about before, um, some friends of mine, the Rival Sons, which is an incredible rock band. Um, I, I toured with them in Europe um, and that kind of gave me a, a leg up. And at the time I was also like my manager was in the UK and we were trying to spend a lot of time over there. So I was playing in the UK like clubs like a lot. Like I basically lived in Europe for a couple of, at least a couple of years, you know, mm. um, and, you know, working in London and all around, you know, Manchester and all around the UK and touring in Europe, touring in Italy. And then, um, I have toured the States, um, but mostly just the coast, you know, I've spent a lot of time in New York. I've spent a lot of time in Seattle, San Francisco, um, over the years, you know, on my own, but really, um, in the last few years, Europe has been um, kind of the focus and where I've, you know, built up um, some stamina over there, you know, yeah. obviously before, yeah, 20, before 2020. Yeah, yeah. So, and well, I, it, yeah, yeah, there and here, you know, yeah. um, but I, I love, you know, I love it all, but I, I, I do love Europe quite a bit and, and yeah. miss getting to get over there. Yeah, so hopefully, it's hopefully, it's hopefully soon. Yes, I think we all have the travel. Well, people that like to travel are antsy to travel, um, especially if you like Definitely. international travel. Um, so, you know what? I hear, I think Tom is coming in. What I'm thinking we should do is I should put on Chloe, or do you think Paris? Paris? What, whatever you like. Yeah, let's do sure Paris, since like. we're talking about being romantic. What okay. is, what is this couldn't be any more romantic than a stroll through Paris um, and uh, we'll play that and then we'll magically come back configured differently. <laughs> okay. How does that sound? <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. Um, all right. So for our listeners, you can hear a lot of Jameson's beautiful music on Instagram at Jameson makes music. And right now we're going to dive into one of his um, solo songs. Ooh, if I could do it right. Yeah. I'm not the most proficient editor here. <laughs> uh, You're doing great. It will start to play. And I'm um, holding back in my the arm out for you. Your heels on the cobblestones. Now we speak and Hey, hey, do we have, uh, Jameson. Jameson, do we have contact? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm right here. Okay, good thing. Just check it out on it. I just hit the massive traffic on the way down. Oh, no worries. So I, I don't know. Uh, I don't see you at the moment, but I'm you sure you're there. I can hear your voice. In a moment. Let's see. Let's see what I can <laughs> So for our listeners that are staring at the black screen, um, <laughs> it's kind of like a Zoom experience, but uh, that was Jameson Burt, and you can connect to his music on Instagram at Jameson Music, and Jameson makes music, sorry, Jameson. <laughs> no, that's right. And you have, you're so great, because you get on live quite a bit, I've noticed, and uh, entertain those of us that would like to experience live music, but as we were talking about, are not able to quite yet. <laughs> like you should have something. Yeah, here we are. Some image popping up here. Yeah. 
All right, bingo. We found we found our way in. My camera so, a little bit. My camera just tilt, tilt me up a little bit. All right. All right. Good, good to see you, man. A little fraction, and then we can zoom in a little bit, play around with this camera. Up a little bit more. A little bit higher. A little bit higher. There you go. Now I'll be able to zoom in. Okay, right. good. This we is like a Lucille Ball moment. <laughs> well, this is it's, it's a pleasure to have you here. I, I had the time to mm -hmm. listen and watch and and get a sense of your passion and uh, what a wonderful indie creator in the joy zone you seem to be. Uh, Thank you. Know, you. Always, the, always the question is is how how do you you know for our listening audience it's like it, you know the, the journey of the artist is a sacred one and takes a lot of courage to be on that path and so we love to find people like you to share your journey so that uh, people can have some insight to the not only the level of work but the level of satisfaction at the end of the road that you pull from your art and how extraordinary that is well that's that's beautifully said there and i appreciate you guys for having me on um and appreciate your search for that for that passion you know um, yeah, it's something, I mean, it's a big question, but it's something that's just carried me my whole life, you know, it grabbed on in my early teenage years, as far as the love of music and, and then the desire to be as good as I could be. And so learning discipline and learning dedication and, and all those things. And it's really just never let up, you know, um, well, we have, how does that? What does that look like? You know, particularly people think of an artist, or they watch an artist do their work in the end, and it, it looks anything but disciplined, and it looks anything but rigorous. It looks anything but earned in a lot of ways because you make it look so easy, and you make it feel so good. Uh, any uh, a little any insight into into your discipline and into your practice in terms of maybe the rhythms and how you set up your day, maybe how you set up your week. Or maybe how you set up the last 10 years. I mean, how did you go about getting into your art? Sure, sure. It's a good question. Um, I think uh, the main thing for me, the constant in, in whatever kinds of music I've been doing or whatever bands I've been in is writing is always number one. You know, uh, writing songs. If there's no songs written, there's nothing to do, you know, so... For me, the discipline, the discipline of, of showing up to write every day and see what's available that day is, has been something I learned, you know, years ago and that I, I, I try to be committed to. Obviously, you have some days where you're doing other things or um, you're doing other music things or other things in your life that you have to take care of. But in general, if I haven't sat down for a number of hours every day to see what's available that day that I need to write down or I need to play, then I haven't, I haven't done, I haven't done my job, you know? Mm -hmm. So. Okay. What, what, so what, so what'd you write today? What'd you put down on the page today? Well, today I didn't put down anything on the page today. I was in the studio and was, a song was written, a couple songs that were written. I went in alone today. I do have a partner, Andy Carter, that we could talk about, but he was out of the studio today, so I went in alone today. We're trying to finish, getting really close to finishing a full record's worth of, of work. And so today was some really detailed, just kind of editing stuff. Um, this song that's I really love that's almost finished that's just like this sound isn't quite right or this part of the arrangement isn't quite right so just hours of kind of focusing on like the minute details and some days that's what it is you know the details are um, so important <laughs> right they, they are they are to me i mean I, I i think it's different too if you're which right now I'm not, but like recording live with a band, you know, like Rolling Stones style or something where it's just getting smashed out and then it gets left. But the way I'm recording lately is, is um, with 
just me and one other guy and we're playing all the instruments so it's mm -hmm. like it's a little more it can get a little more heady in terms of figuring out which parts work you know you don't have five or six guys in the room at the same time playing all the parts and bouncing them off each other so it's a little more it's a studio recording you know right. so sometimes you have to take some time over each section to or each part to really make it sit in and feel natural so but i love that process i mean i really do i love the studio process as much as i love the live mm -hmm. um razor's edge kind of yeah spontaneous thing i i, I love it all you well know? you're living a life i mean a lot of people you know you're, you're kind of like living this rock star existence or this uh, what folk how would you consider what would you call your you your music i've never been very good at that <laughs> at, <laughs> at, well, I mean, at that genre which yeah uh, i don't know i do, i go by alternative indie alternative i guess i mean the truth is I'm a, I'm a singer songwriter and, and I guess the music lately, especially has gone more into that. I guess that is a genre singer songwriter. Right. Um, and it has gone more into that genre in the last year, partly because of, um, the quarantine and I haven't seen my full band in, you know, almost a year. So it's drawn me into more, sitting at the piano like i have an acoustic piano i'm actually sitting in front of it right now you can't see it but um are you gonna jam on it you gonna open up on that thing for us <laughs> you wouldn't be impressed i'm not i'm not a very good piano player i just i'm well, more um well, how do you it's a nice that? place how do you it's a it's piano as a, as a tool it's a great place for me because i'm i'm not good at it it's a great place for me to find something new that i wouldn't naturally do on the guitar because i've been playing guitar for so long um and i would say i'm more of a trained <laughs> guitarist you know I, i'm really comfortable on the guitar playing guitar sometimes feels like a game like it's a little I, i'm not saying that in an arrogant way but just like it's i'm so comfortable there that sometimes it's good to get on an instrument where you're uncomfortable to see what comes out you know and the piano is so great because you can just find a melody. Anyone can just press their finger down on the piano and that one note sounds beautiful, you know? Right. So it's a great place to find melodies and, and find new song ideas where um, I'm not kind of constrained in, in a way as I am on guitar because I've been playing it for so long, you know, if that makes sense. Absolutely. And so when is this, uh, album coming out. I don't. I don't know. Um, I don't know yet. We're fin We're kind of finishing the tracking right now, and then we'll be mixing. And to be honest, it's a question of of do we want to put out a record in the next couple months when we can't really tour it? We can't really. Right. book a hometown a big fun hometown release party you know yeah absolutely. um so i mean we've got that record that's almost done i've got another ep that's really getting pretty close to done and another handful of kind of singles so i don't know we might we might get the record ready and just go for it or we might just put out Older. kind of a song here a song here and there you know yeah. i'm really proud of all of it so um but i i still really care about the full record thing and um it may or may not be the right time right now but right. we'll we'll see but there's new music coming soon one way or another you know i'm yeah. dedicated to keeping things coming out regularly so right well i would think now yeah. more than ever people really crave a full album I one of my friends. He you said, think? Yeah, cause he he actually did a little survey, and everyone said the full album because he was trying to see uh, if he should release this full, you know, one song at a time or not. And so the audience feedback I'm, was the full album. So I'm glad to hear that. It's a good time to listen to a full album if you're if you're someone that's um, 
like most of us are at home a lot and with more free time than usual. So yeah. it's a good time to put on a put on dark side of the moon and yeah. <laughs> you know, sit down for an hour. <laughs> exactly. It's like being, I don't know, uh, the younger generation, they've been really craving the 70s. So it's kind of we're going back, we'll have vinyl soon and just sit and spin our, yeah. our records and listen to the whole yeah. thing several times yeah. over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Can't hop around on that digital streaming. And yeah. uh, speaking of, I just learned this because uh, my daughter just released her first single song. And oh, some, great. Someone was interviewing her, and I was like, oh, I didn't realize this was happening. But they were saying as of September, we're not going to be able to have any more live performances, like on Facebook, and who knows if it'll get overturned. Um, a, did you know about that, and how do you feel about that? No, I hadn't I hadn't heard anything about that. Yeah, I, I just was curious, because that'll change the environment, too, um, where people will have to share their music live in a private virtual room versus a public virtual room, basically, mm. what they've written. So I was curious if you had heard about that. I, was like, I hadn't heard wow. about that. <laughs> now I want to I wanna, I wanna find out what's going on. Um, I haven't been doing Facebook Live. I've been doing Instagram Live pretty yeah. pretty regularly, but I guess it's the same thing, right? They're owned by the same people. So, um, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. I didn't know about that. I think that's, I think that's, that's probably their their things are changing where they were considered a platform, and I think they're being forced forced or have to own up to being more of a publisher, and so that mm. might be why. So they don't have to pay you out mechanicals. <laughs> When you're uh, on a yeah. thing, I don't know. Um, yeah. I think, you know, they have gotten stretched even with us. Sometimes they're, they're like, you can't play that music even if it's the artist. <laughs> so, right, know. right. So, yeah, I get that. It's it's probably just because when I'm live streaming, sometimes I get a little bit of sailor mouth and curse <laughs> too many times and they're trying to, that's what they're cracking yeah, they're, down on. They're after your potty mouth. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, listen. No, I, yeah, I was just curious if you knew. Um, but maybe that's yeah. a good benchmark day that will be more open by, I heard May, but maybe for sure by the fall, which seems odd to say, uh, okay. there will be place, places available in live venues. You know, yeah. All music off. So tell me, yeah, tell right. me what's, it, what's it like to be in your head? <laughs> what's your, what's, how do you feel over there? What's happening with you as you process moment to moment? You can, you're an extremely present individual. You can feel, I can feel your, you know, here I am. Whatever happens, happens. I'm ready to roll with anything. Is that, is that, is that something you learned or part of your training? Are you a spiritual guy? Or, I mean, where do you pull that level of presence from? Is it just, uh, what happened? How did you get there? How did you get here? Man, I, I appreciate that uh, the that I come across that way. I thank you for saying that. Um, yeah, I guess that was a, a conscious spiritual choice over the, over the years. I don't maintain it by any means. <laughs> um, I get lost, you know, like the rest of us, especially the last year has been so challenging, you know, personal spiritual level. Um, I think in my, in my early 20s, I was lucky enough to be working with a couple producers and other musicians that were tuned into things that I wasn't yet. Just in, I mean, you said the word presence. I think that's a great word and something that's really important to me to be, to try to be present in the moment, you know? Um, and this producer I worked with, Alex Gibson, was really into this one particular author and passed along a book. And it did it did help me, like, in a critical stage of me be becoming a young man, you know. Come on, um, the book. Come on, pass it. Share it. <laughs> the secret. <laughs> no, the author, David Data is the author. David Data. And, yeah. And, what, and he's, kind of a, he's kind of a strange kind of a strange cat um and in retrospect some of it i kind of agree with and some of it I, I could take or leave some of it you know but at a at a at that critical point in my life um 
it really uh, helped me to realize certain aspects of what it is to be a human, what it is to be a man. And, and I really grabbed onto some of those things. Mm. And just presence in general is, was one of the main kind of Themes. thrusts of thrusts of the of the, of the book so well, how, do you, um, how, do you, how do you find how do you how we well, discovered it and then tell us you know we have a listening audience and everybody you know your awakening can awaken somebody else in terms of just how you're utilizing it within your art i mean how can you quantify or qualify your level of presence based on the quality of the work that you do mm, that's a great question i've never really thought about that um well, you don't have to think about it, but... No, I was... No, no, but it's great. <laughs> it's a great question. Um, I'm thinking about... Uh, there's this quote from, from Hemingway, you know, which is one of my favorite authors, where he's saying, I would rather go live and have experiences and come back to the typewriter. And even though I haven't practiced and I have to resharpen the tool, resharpen the knife. Now I've got something to talk about. And I agree with that. And I think to circle back to the presence thing, I don't know. It's just, I, I want to live my life in a certain way to where I can write about it later and have some kind of clarity about what I've been through or some kind of perspective about what I'm going through as a human. Cause we're all just, human beings you know and art is art music whatever is supposed to relate to people and um i just i guess for me along the way it was became clear that i just had to be really honest with myself and about what i was going through and face that as clearly as possible whatever it was good or bad um and not run from anything and, and try to be present in my experiences. A, just to, because that's how I want to be a human and B it's secondarily, it helps to, when you're writing to be aware of what the hell's going on in your life, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. So. so were you a runner before you learned to be present or did you, <laughs> did you run out of the room? <laughs> A, a runner, like a, a physical runner, no, or like someone a, who metaphorical, <laughs> like where he's like, ah, I don't want to be, I don't want to face this, so you, you kind of either. No, you know, no, I don't think, I don't think so. so. You're pretty close I don't to think being so. Present. Yeah, so yeah, I mean, easy to grasp. I don't, because some people, I don't know. Out, some people just literally run away. Some people can, you know, stay in the room, but they're not in the room, kind of thing. I don't know. I've always been a pretty sensitive guy to be honest you know I was a sensitive kid mm -hmm. you know sweet kid and um, so I think when I was growing into like manhood you know in my 20s like, you start realizing like oh I like I'm an adult and that that information and that book we were talking about was just came at the right time mm -hmm. to help me kind of come out of boyhood into manhood I guess you know I'm still a little kid in, in a lot of ways but <laughs> yeah, how, how don't get you, me wrong how are you defining the, that transition between boy and man uh, that's a, I find that pretty, pretty interesting in terms of how you're you definitely experienced a shift there was something that happened and then you became something so what, what, what was that I mean, how, was that? How, did, how did you define that for yourself I guess if I could pinpoint something, um, well, the presence thing, which is kind of like presence, like kind of being responsible for yourself and your actions in the moment and conducting yourself with strength or, or not being afraid of what's happening in front of you, not running home to mommy, you know, it, not literally, but um learning to deal with life as it comes to you i think that's that's one thing which i'm still again still not uh great 
great at, you know, we're always perfect, but, um, the, the, but trying, trying to embody that. Well, what does that effort look like? So when you're, when you're challenged to say, and you feel yourself slipping, well, what sort of things do you do to recover? Because, you know, as an artist or as a, you know, as a performer, you know, showtime is whenever showtime is set and no matter what happens, you got to show up and be. And so it's about pre preparing for a particular moment in time so that you can shine. Is there a hurdle that you get over? Is there a thing that you do to help uh, assure you're in the right place at, when the time arrives? You mean in, in life or in, or in performance? Well, well, for me, it doesn't ma really matter because it seems like the same yeah. muscle that you're exercising in life assists yeah. you at that moment of, okay, it's 7 o'clock, I'm on. Regardless yeah. of what has happened to me before, the show is going on. And yeah. so there's a, there's a right series on. of, like, I'm preparing myself for this to be as good as I can be. Uh, and sometimes in life, too, you know, it's like, you know, you, you might get down or something might happen, but then somehow we got to get up out of bed and we got to get the wheels moving again. What do you, what do you do? How do you, how do you, how do you make that happen? Absolutely, man. I, I, I love your perspective and I love the way you're saying what you're saying. Um, yeah, I guess, well, I mean, as far as performance, it's not that different, is it? I, I guess. Um, you know, on a show day, I know I have to, I, I have to go run in the morning, go run for an hour, I have to stay hydrated, have to keep my head clear, you know, little things in the day can, can stress you out. And I've made the mistake in the past, like, especially on a show day, especially a, a big show day, letting something small, um, what someone said to you or something that happened, like get on your nerves. And then all of a sudden you're boiling up a little bit and it screws with your head, screws with your voice, screws with your spirit, you know? Yeah. So trying to maintain kind of perspective and some level of, I mean, I'm not a Buddhist or anything. I probably should be <laughs> probably all should be. <laughs> But like some level of, for like, you know, general Zen, you know, trying, like trying to strive for something where it's like, it's okay, you know, just accepting whatever's happening, trying to stay cool, trying to, um, yeah, I mean, and then aside from that, like on a, on a show day, you know, vocally, I'm, I've learned over the years, um, what I need to do to be able to perform as best I can uh, to the best of my ability, you know, and that's a lot of, that's a lot of warm up throughout the day. That's a lot of being hydrated, exercise, eating the right things, not eating the wrong things a couple days, you know, with, you know, in general, and then especially on the day of the show or the day before, you know, like, um, making sure you feel good and your head's in a good space to perform. You know, it's really important to me. Some guys, I mean, I know vocalists that are way better than me that can just, I don't know. It's like they just get out of bed and get on stage and like <laughs> nail it. But I can't, I've learned, you know, I, I, I know I have talent in certain areas and other areas that um, have been harder work to develop, you know. Um, like, and what, what I... What, what's your what's your experience? What are you working on right now? I'm always working on my voice and I'm always having to not fight, but, um, be disciplined to get it to do what I want it to do, you know? Well, um, and explain I, to the listeners, cause that's not, you know, an easy thing. I think a lot of people think, uh, vocalists just show up and sing cause they're talented at it. But if you can share a little bit about the discipline of even working at that well the other thing is i just took a sip of a cocktail and i'm gonna go smoke a cigarette once we're done here so <laughs> light you know that life is life <laughs> life is you know for me it's always it's always balancing things you know um so maybe some things in my life like i just said don't help but i'm enjoying them right now and so 
to maybe work a little harder on the other side. But really, vocally, it's like I was talking about the difference between me as a guitarist and me as a vocalist is guitar. I just started so early and spent so many hours a day, like as a kid, getting really comfortable with the guitar and started singing later and like, you know, not late in life, but like later in my teenage years. Um, I didn't really have any training or didn't, um, it didn't come as naturally to me, but once I got going, it's something I wanted to be really good at. And so that's still a process of, for me of always wanting to get better and wanting to make sure I'm doing everything in my power to, um, Do you have the guitar there with you, Andy? Uh, I I do. It's behind me. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't you wake up? Yeah. He's not going to sing because he's, he he's resting right. his voice. He doesn't have but to But we have a single here too. <laughs> well, I, well, I, I want to see. Why don't you pick up your guitar and just 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 uh just play a few bars? You don't have to sing nothing. Well, if I can reach it with my headphones in here. This is just my uh, my acoustic. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it with the uh, with the earbuds here, but well, you don't even have to um, play it in. Play something for yourself. I mean, the, the ease in which you talk you about. It. Yeah, we hear it good. No, no, just can't hold it. Hold it. Hold your baby. Hold your baby. This is my. This was my dad's guitar. Was it? Yeah. Well, he he well, got this your, when he hold was your like. Baby and play it whenever you feel like it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> She's good. This was my dad's guitar. He got it when he was like 16 years old. Um. And just you know, that's what he learned on, and he knocked it around over the years, and it wasn't like an expensive instrument when he bought it, but. It's aged well, and um, you know what's fun about that. You know what's fun is that the ease in which you, you know, you, you, you picked up the, the extension of yourself, and you you you, you sang, you sang with it. You, you 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 created this little union between you and this thing, and you expressed yourself through it. And I always find that to be fascinating. You know how we can take an inanimate object and use it to express ourselves with. You know, we have mm -hmm. a body that sort of does the same thing, but when you take a tool or you take a, any sort of an instrument and you, and you uh, do that dance with it and speak with it, speak another language with it and send energy out and then on that energy comes these notes and the sound. It's, you know, you're, it's, it's magical. And it's, it is. Right? It is. It's a beautiful, it's a, an incredibly, I mean, I was, I feel lucky, you know, um, I think musicians are lucky, artists are lucky. It's a hard, you know, in some ways, it's a harder lifestyle to try to make your life and your living and all that, you know, it's more challenging, but it's such a gift, you know, and it is so incredible just to be able to, like you said, you said it very beautifully, to be able to pick up an object, you know which doesn't even feel like an object. It feels like a person, you know, <laughs> um, and yeah, interact you, with you it. Make, and create you something. make people feel with it. You know, I mean, you, you put them right where you are with it. Uh, yeah, it is. It's a beautiful, beautiful, mysterious thing, isn't it? You know. <laughs> you, you realize you are transporting people when you pick that up and, and you go to work. Yeah. You're, you're a yeah, well, transporter. You're, you're, you're a gifter. <laughs> I, I hope so. I try. Yeah, try my right? best. Right. I mean, what is the gift? You said it's a gift to be a musician, and so the uh, what? What is what? Is, did we just talk about the gift, or or what is the thing in there that's magical for you? If it is magical, man, there's so many things about it that I think are a gift. Like some of it is just. Well, let's sell it. Let's sell it because you know what? <laughs> I got. I got. I got to say, there's a lot of misery in the world, and I can say that uh, yeah. through the arts. It's a good, it's a good, it's a good healing mechanism, and people that involve yeah. themselves in the arts have a way to express themselves and have an outlet. And I think the problem in these societies when things get tight, the first thing that they cut out of 
Our schools are in the arts. The first thing we stop going to see are the arts. And somehow, somehow this, like even now, like concerts and singing out in public are for, forbidden. It's like some sort of weird, draconian existence where the, the first thing they cut out are the things that make us feel good. Um, mm. And uh, but to understand even the journey of the artist with in their art is a is a healing process. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, you said you said right at the beginning of what you just said. What I was going to say first is that on a personal level, for the artist or for the creator, it's medicine, you know, and it's and it's therapy, and it's a way to whatever you're dealing with something to put yourself into and work through your own either work through or turn off your own head mm. you know and it's 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 medicinal mm. and um i'm very you know i'm very grateful for that it's gotten me through some difficult times where it's like if i didn't have something to that creative outlet to express myself even if even if it's something no one's ever going to hear, just for me to make something out of my emotions rather than just sit on them yep. is just so incredibly valuable. And um, and then obviously when other people get to experience that and and then take it into their own head and heart and get to put their own interpretation on it, then it's just yeah, it's magic. It is. Yeah. And look what we have here with us too. We have Suzanne Taro who. <laughs> Heals people on a daily basis with the sounds that she makes, right? Uh, uh, a little different, but <laughs> but music, it, it's beautiful. You know, as you were talking, Jameson, it reminded me of, you know, when I can be cooking or writing, I, mm -hmm. I'm a poet or a writer, that you get very mm -hmm. present with that process. And if it's flowing or even if you're not sure where you're going to go with it, it feeds you uh, really mm -hmm. beautifully. Mm -hmm. So... Um, it's a gift to be able to hear your voice because, like I said, you're, you're very talented. And anyone out there right now, please go to Jameson's Instagram account at Jameson Makes Music. Uh, it's a great place to connect to his online offerings. And then soon this album will be very excited. Is there, um, is there more music on here from? Yeah, we'll have Chloe. We're going to have to wrap up shortly because. We have to flow into the next guest, and Jameson's been so yeah. kind to be here. Well, why don't we? Why don't we send? Why don't we send it out on uh, on Chloe? Yeah. Well, let's ask him the question. You're such a soulful being. We have to ask this question. Which one is it? If that? you were God, Jameson, what oh, are right. three oh, things that you oh, boy. bestow or shift in humanity so they could feel your divinity? <laughs> oh my God! You should have given me this question in advance. <laughs> no spontaneity. What what do you think will really help? First three, just three, just three things. I mean, you know, a if you if you're a God, what 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 do you think humanity could benefit from um, through your infinite wisdom through your art? Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> That's such a huge question. Oh my gosh, it's a great question. <laughs> Well, to a lot of people in the audience, you are God. Once you spend, once you get going, you know they're like looking up to you, like, "Oh my good, oh, oh my God, boy. this guy's I, transporting me." I certainly hope not. Well, unless unless you <laughs> kind of believe that we all are God, yeah, in some way. We're all Buddha, which I kind of do Buddhism, actually. So, when the Buddha in you comes do. out, what are you gonna kind of do? To prescribe to that. Oh my God, guys, I don't. It's really hard to have an answer for you on that one. Okay. Um, Fly off the cuff. What, it, what have you been offered be, in those divine moments? Maybe, 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 maybe we need more. Maybe we need don't more be, fiber in our diet. Don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. You're stronger than you think you are. Mm. Beautiful. That's one. Don't be afraid. You're stronger than you think you are. That's one. Beautiful. Don't be afraid. You're stronger than you think you are. You're already off to a good start being uh, a good love, God. Love, love, love is love is the power. Love, love is, is the power. power. Love is the, the power. power. Don't be afraid. 
and love is the power. Love is the power. No love is the power. Excellent. Number three. Pick up an instrument. <laughs> yeah, pick up an instrument. Yeah, pick up an instrument. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> uh, well, listen. See you. See you. You're. You're. We'd be in good hands if if you were God. And uh, so. Uh, uh. Thanks, thanks so much for being with us on Indie Creators in the Joy Zone. This is Thomas Rodeman and Susan Toro. We're going to play it. You want to go, go ahead before we send them out on call? Yeah, well, so when, the, when you decide on the big launch of the album, let us know and we'll do... It sounds like your cat is in the room. Is your cat in the room? Um. <laughs> no, I think that might be our, our DJ our DJ friend. Oh, DJ friend. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, okay. Very good. Um, anyway, so... When you um, get ready to launch that album, let us know. We'll have you back, and we'll do a full shebang. Maybe we'll even Thank do you. it live somewhere. You know, so that, that would be great. Be. Yeah, right. it's a pleasure pleasure to talk to you guys. I appreciate the conversation, and yeah. Thank, Thank you. you for having me. Thanks Thank for inviting our audience. Thanks for sharing your your gift. Appreciate you. Thank, Thank you, guys. It's a pleasure. Chloe. If I knew you, I might love you. If I loved you, then I would sleep In the dark next to your body Nothing here but you and me But if I love you, then I might suffer Every time you turn away If you love me, you might hover like a shadow over the lake. So don't say if I won't ever say if. Okay, yeah, 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 we can yeah, hear you exactly. perfectly. Okay, all right. So we're going to sign out and then we'll come back. So this is, this is Suzanne Toro and Thomas Ardovani with Indie Creators in the Joy Zone. That was Jameson Burt. You can check out his music on Jameson Makes Music on Instagram. And the links below are also there for his YouTube page and Spotify. You can check out his that single, Chloe, which will extend that in the final cut of this episode. So thank you for being here.